What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Austin Harley, I'm a real estate agent and now real estate broker. Today I'm bringing you a video that I thought was really interesting. I put a lot of thought and effort into it, so if you can do me one favor, smash that like button below and consider subscribing for more content if you're a real estate agent or honestly if you're just interested in real estate in general and building up your wealth. So today we're going to be talking about the three biggest mistakes that I made my first year in real estate and for any of you guys that don't know me go ahead and check out this video after you watch this video in full so you can learn a little bit more about my story and how I built up and quadrupled my income from working at a bank making forty to fifty thousand dollars a year. So without further ado let's jump right into this video. So the first thing that I want to tell you is when you get into real estate you're you're going to be overwhelmed with pretty much everything. You're not really going to know what you're doing or what to do, let alone how to manage your day-to-day -day tasks. And to throw that into the mix, it's even harder when you're transitioning from a full-time job like most people are. So pay close attention to these learning lessons because they were huge for me and they costed me upwards of six figures in the long run of things. So one of the first things that I would say, and if you've watched my other video and you know about me, you know that I like to just throw money out there and really just test things. I'm always experimenting things, whether it be with marketing or just generally learning the system and learning things in real estate. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made my first year in real estate was just blowing way too much money. I did blow some money on stupid things like buying a fancy car and stuff like that but that's not what I'm talking about. Obviously, you shouldn't do that. The things that I blew money on that I regret, experimenting around with too many different types of marketing. So I quickly realized once I got into the real estate industry that lead generation was the key to making money. Our services were very high dollar. We get paid very high commissions for what we do as a realtor. So what I quickly learned is the more people I could talk to, the more sales I can convert and the more money I can make, which is true. That's how I made six figures my first year. However, I could have made more and very quickly learn that because I spread myself across the board too thin. Now let me explain a little bit more. When we talk about lead generation in real estate, you want to choose two, maybe three pillars at max. And this is a simple Keller Williams model that I think everyone should follow. And I'll probably make a video about it later on. But Tom Ferry also talks about it as well if you want to Google the three pillar technique. But basically in a nutshell, what it says is you should choose two or three lead generation pillars and you should stick to that for basically basically until it works and then you should expand onto more pillars. So basically your entire career. Now, one of the things that I did is I expanded that pillar, those three pillars to like 20 pillars. So I was doing EDDM, I was doing Craigslist ads, I was doing rentals, I was targeting buyers, I was calling Fizbos and expireds. Oh my God, I was door knocking. There were so many different types of things that I was doing that when I did it over the short time period of like let's say three to six months, I wasn't seeing the results that I wanted to because I thought I could just dedicate you know, 70, 80 hours a week to all of these lead generation ideas and I thought all of them would just explode at once. Little did I know I got burnt out because I didn't really realize how hard real estate was and I got so discouraged with some of the lead generation ideas, although they would have worked if I stuck to it, I ended up getting burnt out, I stopped doing it and I, and I sunk so much money into some of these ideas and once I stopped doing it, I just ended up blowing all the money away and basically having to write it off. So if you watch my other video, you'll learn mistakes about how I lost a lot of money. These are the specific things that I lost money on my first year in real estate. So what I would say to give you some advice going forward is don't focus on 57 lead generation ideas. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Try to stick to something that's proven to work, whether it's going to be open houses, do it for a year continuously. Don't expect to see results. When I first started at the age of 20 to 21, I was working for an investor that was flipping properties for completely free. I didn't expect anything in return. It wasn't actually until my third year in real estate, which technically was my first year because it was the first year I went full time, that I started actually making real good money. So when you first get into real estate, I know it's difficult to hear, especially if you want to make it a full time career. You need to work to learn and not work to earn in the beginning. Now coming into the second thing that I want to talk to you about, and it's following up with your past clients. And this doesn't just mean being weird and calling them every two weeks and asking them when they're looking to buy or sell, but actually get involved and interested in their life and what they're doing. So if you see a Facebook post, 
on your buyer or seller, which by the way, you need to add all your friends as a Facebook that are potential clients as a Facebook friend because if the event that they see you consistently posting about what you're doing in the field, you know, I'm at an open house, I'm at this, I'm doing this, and you're teaching them actively, you're gonna stay top of mind. But that's a complete side note. If you see them get married or something, shoot them a quick Facebook message and just keep it short and sweet. You don't have to have these long drawn out conversations. Remember, you're a realtor. They only need you when they need you, <laughs> which is to buy or sell. So you're just there to stay top of mind and following up with your past clients, get their addresses, get their name, their email, their phone numbers, but don't do it in a creepy way by sending out like surveys if you fill out the survey, we'll give you a $5 gift card. Don't do none of that weird stuff. Just become actual friends with your clients. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Follow up with your past clients a lot more heavily because you've already put in the effort to generate that lead produce the relationship, might as well cultivate it to something more because even if they don't use you in the future and use some other realtor like has happened to me in the past, they will refer you out to other people. Trust me, I've gotten referrals off of people that I've worked so hard to generate as leads and I've never even done business with those particular first people that I've gotten referrals from. So this whole business is about meeting people and building relationships and you're gonna go really far in it. All right, so and the final mistake that I regret that I wish you could go back to my first year in real estate and focus on is farming. Now, a lot of you realtors, if you've heard of the term farming, will probably know what I'm talking about. But for those of you that don't, to break it down simply, it simply means to geographically locate a neighborhood or a subdivision and just market the crap out of it until you become the market expert for that neighborhood and then you can slowly expand from there. Now, one of the benefits of doing this is that real estate is a time versus money business, like all businesses are. And when you're in real estate, you kinda gotta take what you can eat, but as you start growing and you start to get to pick and choose what you wanna do, then you're gonna realize quickly that you don't wanna drive out of state or 30 miles away to be able to go close a deal. You wanna be able to close a deal close to you in your farm or your neighborhood and you're gonna be a local expert. People are gonna look up to you instead of you driving around and chasing people left and right. Now, if I could go back in time, some of the biggest lead generation strategies that I would follow consistently by farming is to do EDDM. Now, if you don't know what EDDM is, it's basically a mail service that the post office uses on their routes to be able to mail people these little postcards about yourself and about your uh, sales in the neighborhood and just giving away factual information. Now, this does require money up front. So in the beginning, you can do the free method, which is basically door knocking, passing out flyers, which is close to no cost at all besides printer and ink. You could do other things like video ads on Facebook that are less than maybe a few dollars a day to just build your brand awareness. But the biggest thing that I would say is you need to get some type of listing or credibility or sale in that neighborhood that you're choosing and look at the turnover rate. You're not gonna target a million dollar neighborhood just because it's a million dollar neighborhood and you think you can get high commissions. If there's no sales or maybe if there's only five sales a year there, there's no point of wasting all this money on that neighborhood. You want a high turnover neighborhood preferably single family or transition upgrade or downsize home that you know people are gonna be quickly selling and moving because then you can capture the sale and the buy if you earn their trust correctly. Now to finish off this video with some things that I wish I could go back in time for, I wish I would have joined a team earlier. Now some recommendations to joining a team and this is a completely another video so I'm not gonna stress too much on this but you wanna find a team that's already in the process of growing, not one that's fully grown because then they're not gonna share any of their learning curves with you and you're not gonna see their mistakes. So try to find a team that will accept you and trust me, they will, they're hungry too if they're gonna be able to take a split off of it. But more importantly, negotiate your split to justify why you're paying them. If they're going to promise to teach you something of value and you have a good relationship with these people, then you should be paying them a split. Don't be greedy with it. <laughs> you have to pay to learn in real estate. If they're gonna be giving you leads, that's instant exposure to build up your experience in real estate and that's priceless. So you should be paying them a split for that as well. One of the other things that I wish I could go back in time for is I wish I would have given more time to those lead generation tactics that I talked about before, like mailers, like doing those door knocking activities, because I know they do produce results. And on top of that, it does cultivate your skill and make you a braver and smarter realtor. Because knocking on someone's door and being able to start a conversation is a great skill to have. And had I have stuck with that, it would have helped me later on in my listing appointments learning curve and my buyer consultation learning curves as well. So it's not always about just immediate 
return on your investment, which is getting the deal closed. It's also about building up your skills and understanding that even if you don't close a deal, it's not wasting your time. So stick with it for a minimum of 12 months for whatever three pillars you decide to target. And the last regret I have is I wish I would have gotten licensed earlier. Now, becoming a licensed real estate agent sounds kind of like, oh, you know, he's a realtor. It's whatever there's thousands of realtors in there but seriously guys this industry is insane it will teach you so much about your life and even if you don't like it you will still be able to make money in it to be able to transition out and have a better skill set for yourself and for your later career whatever you do a lot of people that created wealth started as either a real estate investor or a real estate agent and if you're interested in the real estate investment business like i am then you're going to realize that starting as a real estate agent is a great way to just learn the industry and all if you're not already licensed you can check out this video right here but nonetheless i think that everyone should dabble in the real estate industry at all because it's the fastest way to grow wealth and you can double quadruple or 10x your income in less than a few years trust me i have done it and there are many other people out there that have done it as well anyways that's it for this video if you guys have any questions i'd be curious what you do as lead generation ideas or if you're interested in the real estate industry at all Leave a comment down below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. By the way, I have a real estate brokerage in Virginia and the DC metro area. So if you're a realtor watching this video and you're interested in joining, then click the link in the description down below to get directed to my brokerage website and let's connect and see if I can help you at all. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.